Welcome to Model Selection with Cross-Validation. In this video, we'll go over why cross-validation is important, understand how it works, and see how it can be applied in many different ways. Suppose we need to build a machine learning system for the following problem. Given a photograph, we would like to predict, is this a person? Or is this a bomb? Clearly, this is an important problem as well as a public safety issue. As machine learning scientists, we represent the input as an X and the output as a Y, where Y can be 1 for a person or 0 for a bomb. In order to build our system, we need to collect data from the real world to learn from. Our data set consists of many pairs of photographs and labels, either people or bombs. Once we've collected our data, we will train our system and then put it to test in the real world protecting our nation's shopping malls, schools, and airports. Let's look at the training process in more detail. As it turns out, we know many ways of training machine learning systems, each with different parameters and settings. For example, we could learn a one nearest neighbor system, a three near, near, near nearest neighbor system, a five nearest neighbor system, a kernel regression system with a sigma of one, a kernel regression sig system with a sigma of two, naive Bayes, support vector machines, and many others. The problem of choosing which method to, to use from a pool of possible methods is known as model selection. We want to choose the model that will work the best at test time in the real world, but all we have is our fixed data set. One way to choose is to train each method on our data and then test on the same data that we have. This is a terrible idea, akin to giving your students the answer key before giving them an exam. Instead, we will do the following. We will split our data into sections. Each section is called a fold. In this example, we have four folds. Next, we will iterate through the folds as follows. In the first iteration, we train on folds one through three, and then we test our method on fold one. In this case, the algorithm has never seen fold one before, just like when we will test our bomb detector in the real world. We measure the error rate of our method on this fold. We then swap places with folds one and two. Now we train on folds 1, 3, and 4, and we test on fold 2. We do repeat this process for each fold, withholding that fold from training, and then computing error on that fold at test time. Some folds are easier to learn than others. Finally, we combine the four error rates into a single average. This average is known as the cross-validation error. For any single method, cross-validation error is an estimate of how the method would perform if the data we collected is an accurate representation of the real world. We repeat the cross-validation procedure for each method we might select during training. Then, we can select the model with minimum cross-validation error. In this case, Five nearest neighbors is our best guess for which model will be the best bomb detector in the world. Now that we have chosen our model, we can evaluate it on the real world. But what sort of performance do we expect? Do we expect exactly the same performance as our cross-validation estimate? Maybe our estimate was optimistic, or maybe it was too conservative. In fact, the 17% error we found during the model selection process is almost certainly optimistic. This is because model selection has biased our estimate of test error. We chose the best cross-validation error out of many possibilities. So even if we had a pool of 1 million random classifiers, we would still expect at least one of them to have low cross-validation error due purely to random chance. So we need to take another look at our data. We will still use cross-validation, but this time we apply cross-validation twice. First, we separate our data into two parts. The first part will be used for model selection, and the second will be used for testing to represent the unseen world. The important point is that the world data is never touched by our model selection procedure. To perform model selection, we divide the data into folds just like before. In this case, we have six folds. We then perform cross-validation for each of our methods to determine an error rate. In this case, three nearest neighbors is the method with lowest cross-validation error. 
Now we can evaluate the result of model selection on our held out test data. This time we use all folds of the training data during training. Now, what does this final number estimate? In fact, it is the estimate of our entire learning process. We took data, we trained multiple methods, and then we selected the best according to cross-validation. Finally, we tested on held out data not seen by the algorithm. In other words, we achieved an estimate of how our entire learning procedure, which includes model selection as part of training, will perform on unseen data. Again, if the world happens to be well represented by our data set. This time, our estimate of 16% is most likely conservative since we are only using a portion of the data that we have in order to train our model. In conclusion, what did we learn today? First, cross-validation is a simple and useful method of model selection. But more importantly, cross-validation is also necessary to obtain an estimate of the error of our model selection method. Thank you.